people say opposites attract, but that doesn't explain why sometimes animals of different species get together in very strange relationships. We're counting down the top 10 oddest couples in the animal kingdom to find out why even mortal enemies would want to hang out together. Discover that some animals find a match made in heaven or in hell when bizarre partnerships are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. For some entertainers and some animals, life can be so much easier as a double act. In fact, some unlikely partnerships have become the biggest stars in Hollywood history. But as we count down the world's most famous animal odd couples, we'll discover that their relationships are no joke. Sometimes just surviving the relationship is half the battle. To find the first odd couple in the countdown, you need to venture into the waters of the Pacific. This is the home of a fish called the snapper. In the 1980s, two scientists discovered that it's formed a bizarre relationship with a small crustacean. Very little is known about this strange animal, and it's never been filmed because the action takes place in the snapper's mouth. This snapper has no tongue. Instead, it has a tongue biter. This is the only known example where a parasite actually replaces the body organ it destroys. So think yourself lucky that the tongue biter only lives in fish. Imagine what it would be like if a tongue biter decided to live inside your mouth. It would grab hold of your tongue with its strong back legs. Then it would suck so much blood that your tongue would totally disintegrate. Some researchers have suggested that the crustacean may act as a replacement for your tongue helping you swallow food so that you'd stay alive while the tongue biter feeds. If you think that having something living inside your mouth sounds truly disgusting, take a close look at your tongue. It's already home to more than 300 species of bacteria. Fortunately, the majority actually help us by fighting infection. We may not realize it, but our body is full of surprising allies, especially in those hard to reach places. Take a trip down the digestive tract and chances are you could bump into an intestinal parasite. A quarter of the world's population is infected by more than 20 species of worm that are quite at home inside the human body. They're protected from enemies, it's always warm, and their food is delivered right to their room. And while having too many parasites can cause health problems, one man thinks that forming a partnership with a worm may not be all bad. Dr. Joel Weinstock is a gastroenterologist at the University of Iowa, who believes that since humans evolved with parasite partners, our bodies need them to stay healthy. 
Without parasites, our overly aggressive immune systems can attack our intestines, resulting in conditions like inflammatory bowel disease. His cure is to prescribe a glass of worms. We give them um, about 2,000, 2,500 eggs in some juice to drink. The eggs are obtained from parasitic worms that are grown in the laboratory, and the worms produce the eggs, which are then purified and rendered um, safe and useful for use in people. Once swallowed, the eggs develop into worms that stimulate the body's defense system. The theory is that while the patient's body is busy fighting off the parasites, it gets a rest from the irritating effects of an overactive immune system. So perhaps parasites are not always harmful. And while the tongue biter also helps the snapper to swallow its food, it's thought that once the parasitic crustacean dies, so does its host. It's a one-sided relationship, which is why this odd couple is only number 10 in the countdown. Coming up are associations where both partners benefit, even though their dangerous liaison may put their lives at risk. The bottom of a European pond is a strange place to find a fertility aid. But then, a freshwater mussel is the perfect reproductive accessory for a fish called the bitterling. That's because this male uses the shellfish as a partner to help lure a female. He dances around it getting it used to his presence so that it doesn't automatically close up its shell when he gets too close. Then the fish dances to attract a female, but she's only got eyes for his muscle. She's careful to choose a shellfish that filters lots of water because a well-ventilated mussel is important when you want to use it as a nursery. She uses that long tube to deposit her eggs inside the mussel. The male follows close behind and fertilizes them. The fish and shellfish are number nine in the countdown because the bitterling uses the mussel as a high-security incubator. The shellfish maintains a steady flow of well-oxygenated water for the fish's eggs to develop in. After about two weeks inside their strange nursery, hundreds of baby bitterlings leave home. But the mussel wouldn't be the first surrogate mother to take on the kids of an entirely different species. There are stories of human children being raised by wolves, and the most famous comes from ancient Rome. The twin brothers Romulus and Remus had been condemned to die in the wilderness when their cries attracted a she-wolf. She didn't eat them, but nursed them. Romulus and Remus survived and went on to found the city of Rome. Fifty years ago, this girl was also raised by wolves. During World War II, Misha Di Fonseca lost her parents when only seven years old. She wandered for years through the forests of war-torn Europe. Misha claims that she survived by becoming a two-legged wolf pup. So what was it like living with a family of supposedly ferocious killers? As long as I was with them, I feel safe. And I love to be with, with animals. They are my family. <laughs> the feeling to, to be in a family, 
who love their children and who respect each other. That was so enjoyable and, and also to feel again with a family that I don't have. Misha says that she had lots of difficulty learning how to fit back into human society after her time with the wolves. But the relationship between the bitterling and the mussel is far less compassionate. They're only number nine in the countdown because the clam doesn't really get involved in the relationship. The bitterling does most of the work and gains all the rewards. If you thought our first two couples were completely mismatched, then keep an eye out for our next contenders when they combine to fight a well-armed predator. And later, we'll see a strange partnership where the shoe's definitely on the other foot. One of the most famous examples of the way opposites attract was the hit 70s movie, The Odd Couple. If you want to live here, I don't want to see you, I don't want to hear you, I don't want to smell you cooking. The story begins when Felix, a neat freak, moves into his buddy's apartment. I got uh, brown sandwiches and uh, green sandwiches. But Oscar is a slob. What's wrong, Oscar? Something wrong with this system, that's what's wrong. I don't think that two single men living alone in a big eight-room apartment should have a cleaner house than my mother. Now kindly remove that spaghetti from my poker tape. Is that spaghetti? The Oscar and Felix of the natural world live underwater, and one of them is another messy eater. <laughs> Just like Oscar, the hermit crab owns his own home and has no table manners. The hermit crab lives inside empty shells of mollusks. It's prime real estate because it's relatively light and provides protection from intruders. That's because there are plenty of things in the sea keeping an eye on a crab. Fortunately, the octopus is an expert at breaking and entering. The shell wasn't enough protection for this crab. That's why some hermit crabs go hunting for a housemate. A housemate that can act as a security guard. The sea anemone's tentacles are covered with deadly stinging cells for attack and defense. But convincing a bodyguard to shift into a new house isn't easy. The crab has to carefully tickle the anemone's bottom to make it relax. Only then can it be coaxed into moving onto the crab's shell. There are advantages for the anemone if it moves onto the crab's mobile home. Often it has a room to itself and it gets to feed on the crab's leftovers. But researchers have found that the more anemone bodyguards a crab has on its shell, the greater its chances of surviving an attack. So will three anemones be enough to deter an octopus? This odd couple is definitely not flavor of the month for the octopus. But then the hermit crab isn't the only one to call on the help of another animal when in a tight corner. Hey, 
When criminals are on the run, things can get nasty. That's why the police call in, not sea anemones, but dogs. Police down there, let dogs go! There are over 4,000 registered police dogs in the United States alone. Each dog and its handler has such a close relationship that they can respond to all kinds of dangerous situations. But the police in New Jersey have teamed up with a different animal. Move over, Batman and Robin. The strangest crime-fighting duo of them all is a policeman and a pig. Meet Ferris, a highly trained Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. A pig and a cop would make a seriously odd couple if Ferris didn't have an amazing sense of smell. The New Jersey police make use of Ferris's highly trained snout to sniff out drugs. And while Ferris might be a pig, he is a professional. And he doesn't get paid peanuts, but raisins. The hermit crab also gives a little food reward to its partner in crime. The sea anemone earns its keep simply by lying around the house. But coming up in the countdown are animals that have to work much harder in the relationship, or they'll die. So far, we've seen crabby anemones and muscle-bound fish. But still to come is a relationship where someone definitely hogs the bed. And later, what blind animal makes a real leap of faith? Sometimes life can be difficult if you're really tall. Even the simplest tasks can prove difficult unless you have a partner to lend a helping hand. That's why the odd couple squeezing in to number seven in the countdown make a strange sight on the plains of Africa. It's not easy being a giraffe. Even though it's armed with a kick that can crush a lion's skull, it has no defense against one tiny enemy, the tick. These little vampires suck blood and are vectors for disease, which is why the giraffe needs a feathered friend, the oxpecker. A giraffe's parasite problem is an oxpecker's favorite dinner. One red-billed oxpecker can comb out over 400 ticks a day. It's been estimated that oxpeckers will eat over 150,000 ticks in their lifetime. It's a great partnership. The giraffe gets groomed and the oxpecker gets dinner. But the giraffe isn't the only one to live with an animal that loves making a pig of itself. In England, dinner is served for Marion and her best friend, Rachel. She's my complete companion, and she just comes to bed with me, and she eats with me. She just does everything. I've made my mind up now, I don't want men anymore. Got me nowhere, so I'm gonna stick with my pig. She's wonderful, she's honest, she's genuine, she's just a lovely companion. Strangely enough, the giraffe also makes a bed for its companion. 
because the oxpecker builds its nest from hairs taken from the giraffe's fur coat. At least the oxpecker pays for its room and board by doing the vacuuming around the giraffe's shaggy carpet. Our next landlord makes its tenant work much harder. When you're blind, life can be difficult without a partner to guide you. But not all partners have an interest in the other's safety. Diving in to number six in the countdown is a blind animal that makes a real leap of faith. But help is close at hand for the pestle shrimp. Being blind, it can keep out of trouble by hiding in its burrow. But eventually, it has to leave to find food and maintain the entrance to its home. That's why the shrimps teamed up with a guide, Gobi. The Gobi has excellent eyesight, but needs a burrow to hide in. So while the shrimp looks after the house, the goby keeps a lookout for predators. The shrimp keeps in touch with its partner by using its long antennae. If anything dangerous appears, the goby warns the shrimp by shivering and making a quick retreat. With its guard in position, the shrimp can deal with the ever-shifting sands that could fill the burrow's entrance in less than an hour. Its excavations can also provide the goby with occasional snacks. The shrimp prefers to eat indoors, but when its food runs low, it may have to venture further from the entrance, and that's when it can get in trouble. If it gets disoriented, it might never find its way home unless its partner comes to the rescue. This odd couple are number six in the countdown because each partner relies on the other for their survival. But then, the goby wouldn't be the first professional to guide another species home. This family of orphan geese found help in the form of Canadian artist Bill Lishman. He had no trouble guiding his flock in lessons on how to run, but guiding the geese on their migration path meant learning how to fly. Bill Lishman was the first human to guide a flock of geese along their migration path. His babies followed him like they would their real father when, in 1994, he escorted 18 geese over 800 kilometers from Ontario to Virginia. A guide goby may not have to travel as far as a migrating goose, but its job does demand constant vigilance. And sometimes, four eyes are better than two, especially when there's an accommodation shortage on the seafloor. So far, we've seen some relationships that are really deep, while others just scratch the surface. But coming up, who would be buddies with the most bad-tempered animal in the world? And later, we'll meet an odd couple that are always falling out with lethal consequences.
Coming in at number five in our countdown of the most extreme odd couples is an animal that loves honey. The only problem is how to break into the hive. The Honey Guide has developed a unique solution. It knows the location of every hive within 250 square kilometers, and it also knows where to go to get help. The bird calls up one of the angriest animals on the planet. The honey badger has a fierce reputation and a weakness for honey. That's why it teams up with the honey guide. The bird leads the way, calling to guide its partner. The bird is the brains of this odd couple. The honey badger is there as the muscle. The badger's sharp claws can rip open the nest, but even a thick layer of fat under its tough skin isn't enough to protect it from the painful sting of the angry bees. But honey badgers are notoriously stubborn. Some have been recorded staying in the hive until they're stung to death. Once the badger has claimed its reward of energy-rich honey and bee larvae, the honey guide moves in for its share. A badger will find more nests with less effort by teaming up with a honey guide. And the bird gets access to the grubs and comb of the more difficult hives. But if a honey guide can't find a badger, it sometimes forms an odd alliance with another honey hunter. In Kenya, people are all too willing to be led astray by a honey guide. They recognize the bird's signal call and follow its special undulating flight path. Eventually, the bird indicates the position of the hive by subtly changing its behavior and call. People are careful to leave some comb behind for their feathered guide. This relationship has formed over many thousands of years and has got to the stage that people can actually call up a honey guide by using a snail shell whistle. But these are not the only humans that have learned how to talk to the birds. Meet Katrina and her pet goose, Duffy. Having raised Duffy from an egg, Katrina has spent so much time with her pet that she's become a goose whisperer. I'm hungry, you could say, is and you look around, bobbing your head up and down, or if you say, I've got food, you go I look really stupid, but it works. Compared to learning how to speak to a goose, listening to a honey guide is easy. However, chatting up a bad-tempered predator like a honey badger may be a little risky. But coming up next is another badger that forms an alliance with a mortal enemy. This is a prairie dog. 
All kinds of animals love eating prairie dogs and their cousins, the ground squirrels. But they have a wonderful neighborhood watch system. That's why even the best hunters find them a challenge. Just ask a coyote. The coyote has no trouble sniffing out prairie dogs. It's just digging them out that's the problem. They can sneak away down one of their many escape tunnels. That's why sometimes coyotes prefer prey that are easier to catch. Something bigger, fatter, and slower, like a badger. The badger also likes catching ground squirrels. And while it can dig faster than a man with a shovel, it can't run as fast as a coyote. And that's why the badger and the coyote sometimes form an uneasy alliance. These two mortal enemies team up to combine their speed and digging abilities. Ground squirrels that run into burrows can be dug up by the badger. And if they try to escape overland, they can be chased down by the coyote. The coyote doesn't eat the badger because hunting together is 30% more successful than hunting alone. They may make an odd couple, but they're a deadly hunting combination. The only problem is that they have to take turns at eating the spoils. But there is another predator that doesn't like sharing its food. How would you like to steal a grizzly bear's dinner from right under its nose? Especially if the bear is a thousand times heavier than you are. The owners of this cat were terrified when it went up to a grizzly and started eating its food. But the bear didn't eat the cat, he befriended him. Perhaps Grizz the Grizzly's friendly response had something to do with living at Wild Images Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Oregon. Whatever the reason, this odd couple appeared to share a genuine affection for one another. Each night, the cat would sleep curled up under the bear's chin. It was the warmest bed in the center and came complete with its own 300 kilogram teddy bear. But there's not much affection between the badger and coyote. They'd never tolerate living together, unlike the next odd couple in the countdown. So far, we've seen rivals that like to meet and a couple that prefer it sweet, but still to come. How would you like to have one of the world's scariest creatures as a roommate? And why would anyone want to use an ant as a bodyguard? Giant spiders are some people's worst nightmare. Why on earth would anything want to form an alliance with a tarantula? The tarantula can grow as large as a dinner plate. 
It uses its size and strength to hunt down prey bigger than itself. Tarantulas will eat birds, rodents, and sometimes even venomous snakes. It uses its 12 millimeter fangs to inject paralyzing venom and powerful digestive enzymes that liquefy the snake's insides. Then it sucks up the juices. But one of the tarantula's favorite foods is frog. So spare a thought for the poor old frog that's sitting inside the tarantula's burrow right next to the spider's egg sac. But this frog isn't lunch. It's a housekeeper. The frog keeps the nest free of ants and other insects that might try to eat the spider's eggs. In return, the frog gets to stay out of the drying heat and live in one of the safest houses in the district, protected by its very own eight-legged bodyguard. A frog living in a tarantula's home might sound crazy, but some animals can fit in anywhere. Meet Misha and her housemates, Jack and Mark Tressel from Ohio. There she comes. When we got her, she was five months old. She had pneumonia, her hooves were cracked. She had two big gashes in the top of her head and I didn't know how to heal her. So we brought her into the wood stove and she stood there and she got better and then she never wanted to leave. And no matter how hard we tried, she was always back at the door. And so we knew she wanted to stay in forever. If you're gonna have a meal, she's gonna be there. She's gonna want to have some with you. You're gonna have to share with her what I have here. But I'll bet you she'd like the last of mine. I'll give her mine. How's that sound? Okay. Well, the thing is that she'll live to be 40 or 50 years old, and she'll never want to go away and get married. She'll never want to go to college. She'll never want her own apartment. She'll always be happy just to be with us. So for 40 or 50 years, you know, I mean, who can say that about a child? Because they have to grow up and go away, right? Oh, honey, let's have a love fest. OK. One, two, three. Woo! That's a love fest! But it's no love fest in the spider's burrow. When you're living with a tarantula, it pays to take precautions. That's why the frog's skin contains toxic chemicals, just in case the spider tries a little love bite. Our next contender has no such protection against a dangerous predator, so instead, it uses bribery. Ants can be terrifying. Imagine being attacked by 700,000 monsters with scissor-like jaws, two stomachs, and the ability to carry 20 times their own weight. Tree ants will attack anything that sets foot on the branches of their home. Insects are quickly killed, butchered, and carried back to feed larvae in the nest. There's no doubt that ants are a bug's worst nightmare. So you'd think that this caterpillar had made a fatal mistake. But this is no ordinary caterpillar. First, it releases odorless chemical pheromones that change ants from angry predators into the caterpillar's personal bodyguards. 
In return, the ants are fed with drops of honeydew from a nipple on the caterpillar's rear end. It works so well that ants give up nest duties to protect the caterpillar. With such a ferocious partner riding shotgun, the caterpillar can roam the tree safe from predators. But it's not just insects that make a living by being a bodyguard. These are the human equivalent of a tree ant. Human bodyguards have to know how to use surveillance equipment, detect explosives, and be proficient with a firearm. To see the best bodyguards in action, just visit the International Bodyguard Championships. Each year, teams meet in a different host country to test their skills against other professionals. The competition lasts five days and covers the art of protective escorting and paramedic evacuation. They're also tested on their team communication, sharpshooting, electronic counter surveillance, and protective driving. There's even close quarter combat, where teams have to defend against a simulated attack. Being a bodyguard is full of challenges. But at least these humans are not tested on their construction skills, unlike ants. These tree ants actually build a shelter for their caterpillar. First, a team of ants pull two leaves together. Then more ants arrive carrying larvae. With a little squeeze, the grubs produce a sticky silk. They bind the leaves together to make a bedroom for their caterpillar. Then the ants guide it in so it's safe for the night. This odd couple's number two in the countdown because the caterpillar bribes its worst enemy to make a successful partnership for both parties. There's only one relationship that's more bizarre. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the oddest of the odd. Only one couple makes a more extreme dream team. The odd couple at number one in the countdown live in the seas above the Arctic Circle. Only a few animals call this frozen wilderness home, and one of them is the Greenland shark. This sluggish shark often feeds on carrion on the sea floor more than two kilometers beneath the surface. But scientists have found that Greenland sharks also eat fast prey, like squid and salmon. This is especially surprising, given that nearly 80% of the sharks are blind. And they owe it all to the work of a parasite. That small dangling thing on the shark's eyeball is actually a parasitic crustacean that feeds by scraping away at the cornea of the eye. The parasite causes such massive scarring that the shark becomes blind. It sounds terrible, but this shark has such a super sensitive nose that it doesn't need eyes to go hunting. In fact, some researchers have suggested that the crustacean may actually help the shark by acting as a fishing lure. 
The theory is that fast-moving fish may think that the dangling parasite is an easy meal, and this brings them within range of the shark's jaws. But this isn't the first time that animals have been called on to help the blind. In America, more than 7,000 people with severe visual impairment have partnered up with a guide dog. But so far, only two have teamed up with a very different species. The newest guide on the street doesn't bark, lick, or get distracted by hot dog stands. A good alternative to a guide dog is a horse. According to the Guide Horse Foundation, there are some very good reasons to consider a horse as a guide. They have a calm nature, excellent memory, great night vision, and they're very safety conscious. People who use guide horses report that compared to dogs, Horses are not as easily distracted by crowds and people. Luckily, they come in a miniature version, so they can easily fit indoors. And according to the Guide Horse Foundation, they don't get fleas. While the Greenland shark has no fleas, it does have a remarkable parasite. It's an extraordinary relationship that's both grotesque and profitable for both partners. The shark may have lost its eyes to a hungry parasite, but it's gained a fishing lure, which may be far more important in the frigid waters of the Arctic Ocean. Which is why, when it comes to extreme couples, the Greenland shark and its parasitic crustacean really are the most extreme.